Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our regular meeting, June 15th, 2021. Um, I need a motion to return to open session. Thank you, Matt. Could I have a second, please? Thank you. All in favor? Could we all stand for the pledge, please? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we got recognition of retirees. Um, how do you want to do this? Yeah, we'll go down. Okay. Okay, so we have Karen Alexandrovich. She's a cook after completing 28 years. After completing 28 years of service, will retire June 25th, 2021. She is an exceptional employee with a positive attitude and a terrific sense of humor. She has made significant contributions to the food service program throughout her career. She maintains an efficient kitchen and goes beyond to meet the needs of the students. Karen will be greatly missed at Pulaski Street Elementary School. We've got Donna Entrovo, I hope I said it right. Spanish teacher. <laughs> Spanish teacher after completing 34 years of service will retire on June 30th, 2021. She is a devoted, enthusiastic educator who cares about her students and enables them to achieve their full potential. She is a true Spanish teacher at heart who is passionate about enriching her students with the Spanish culture. Donna has been an asset to the Riverhead Middle School and will be truly missed. Congratulations, Donna. <laughs> Donna is not here? Okay. I didn't even, because I'm reading it. Let's see what's going on. Okay, we have Lynn Bigrow, teaching assistant after completing 23 years of service will retire on June 30th, 2021. She is an extremely professional, caring, and committed to her students. She is passionate about her profession, and her Roanoke family definitely will miss her. <laughs> Donna Bascola, I believe, <laughs> elementary teacher, with completing 28 years of service, will retire on June 30th, 2021. She is an enthusiastic, compassionate, and caring educator. Her love and support for her students is remarkable. Her passion towards the teaching profession, extensive knowledge, and her devotion to her students has made her an incredible asset to Phillips Avenue Elementary School, and she will be greatly missed. Congratulations, Donna. Robert Fallett, art teacher, after completing 17 years of service, will retire on June 30th. His extensive knowledge and passion for art has brought a tremendous amount of excitement and creativity to the art program throughout his years at the Pulaski Street Elementary School, where he will be deeply missed. Congratulations, Robert. Barbara Cobus, special education teacher after completing 21 years of service, will retire June 30th, 2021. She is truly devoted professional who has a zest for teaching. She creates a culture 
in her classroom that promotes kindness and cooperation. She is a great person to work with. She always has a positive, upbeat attitude and is willing to assist her colleagues. And she will be truly missed at Riley Avenue Elementary School. Congratulations, Barbara. Robert Nash, Jr., custodial worker number two, after completing 32 years of service, will retire on July 23rd, 2021. He has demonstrated throughout knowledge of his profession, his willingness to help others, and his dedicated loyalty is an asset to the district. He, he takes pride in his work and has done a fantastic job at making Riverhead High School shine, and many will miss him. Congratulations, Robert. I need help with this last name. Ann Priapi? Priapi. Priapi. Science teacher, after completing 23 years of service, will retire in June 30th, 2021. She is an explanatory professional which demonstrates excellent knowledge in her curriculum area. She conveys her passion and genuine enthusiasm for science in her classes. She inspires and motivates her students to reach their full potential. She has an excellent rapport with the students and extends herself to them beyond the classroom. She has earned the respect and admiration of the Riverhead Middle School colleagues, where she will be greatly missed. Congratulations, Anne. Kenneth Schumann, school bus driver, custodial worker one, after completing 17 years of service, will retire on June 30th. As a, bus, as a school bus driver, he puts the safety and needs of the students first. As a custodial worker one, he can be relied upon to maintain a clean and safe work environment. As the president of the CSEA union, he is zealously advocates for his members and has established positive labor relations between the CSEA and the district. Many will miss him. Congratulations, Ken. Sharon Sorovich? Cook, after completing 20 years of service, will retire on August 31st, 2021. She is an explanatory employee who has always conscientious, reliable, and kind. Sharon maintains a well-organized kitchen. She pays close attention to every detail that goes beyond with her job duties. She is a pleasure to work with and has positive relationships with coworkers and students. She will be truly missed at the middle school. Congratulations, Sharon. So therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education that having accepted the resignations of those we just talked, congratulations.
it's always nice when we have a, a board meeting where we're recognizing our retirees as well as our newest teachers, our newest uh, tenured teachers who will be receiving tenure as of September 1st. So when I call your name, come down for your certificate and then we'll ask you to stand by the wall and then when everyone's done, we'll do a group photo again. Paula Almonte. Philip Ants. Congratulations, guys. Send Michelle Ferrugia. <laughs> Jennifer Gordon. Daniel Gorasio. <laughs> Marissa Jacobs. James McGee. Congratulations, James. She's got that on <laughs> Jennifer Natoli. Deborah Nigrell. Edwin Perry. Emily Sands. Congratulations. Allison Shriver. Jennifer Solomon. Congratulations, Jen. Anyel Tomer. Tracy Zambriski. And three other individuals, I don't believe they're with us this evening, but Giochino Benedetto, Jake Benedetto, Margali Lamagna, and Paige McLeod. So congratulations to all of you. This is a big group.
We'll make our way over to the center and go for a photo. Okay, so I got to make a motion to accept all those resignations. Can I have a motion? Can I have a second? Thank you. For the retirement. The resolution. <laughs> Can I have, thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Thank you, Therese. All in favor? Motion. Girls. Okay. We need the high school su students. The student representatives, are you here? Good evening. Last week, the seniors had the senior picnic and senior countdown on the backfield, which included a DJ, a food truck, ice cream, cotton candy, and so many games. There was also a giveaway of numerous amounts of items for the seniors. Everyone who attended enjoyed themselves and were thrilled to be there. As stated before, we also had the senior countdown on the backfield. It was amazing to see all the seniors come together as a whole one last time before we graduated. I was happy, it was a happy and a sad moment for all. Next week, the seniors will also be having their prom at Giorgio's from 7 to 11, with the theme being Under the Stars. The seniors will also be having our senior drive through this Friday at 6 o'clock. The senior class will also be beginning working on their class gift, which will have a chair in the front of the school building in memory of Catherine, a senior of our class who passed away this year. We are also working on hopefully refurbishing up our courtyard. Moreover, student government is also in the process of appointing new class officers and student body officers for the school. Lastly, I would like to say thank you for allowing me to speak to you all monthly and share what is going on within the school. It has been a great honor and a pleasure to do this, and I'm thankful for all the opportunities that have come from this. And I cannot wait to see what the future holds for Riverhead. Thank you. Before we move on, I got one more to... Um, talk about. Sue? Whereas Dr. Sue Kakunis was elected to the Board of Education May 12, 
May 2012, and began her service on July 1, 2012. And whereas during her three-term tenure on the board, Sue has served as president of the board on three separate occasions. And whereas during, during her tenure on the board, Sue has served as vice president of the board on two separate occasions. And whereas during her tenure on the board, Sue served on several board committees, including the Audit Committee, the Intergovernmental Policy Committee, and the Wellness Committee. Whereas during her tenure on the board, Sue has placed a high value on board training, continuing education, and good governance. And whereas Sue has demonstrated a love of Riverhead and a love of students, and she is held in a high regard by her colleagues on the Board of Education. And now therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education accepts the pending conclusion of Sue's service on the Board of Education. Be it further resolved that the Board of Education takes great pleasure in recognizing Dr. Susan Kakunas, Board of Education trustee, and herewith expresses its sincere gratitude for the lifetime of dedication has, she has done for the Riverhead Central School District. Be it further resolved that this resolution be spread upon the permanent minutes of the board and that copies be sent to Sue to share with her family. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Sue. So. Thank you for all those years. Okay, so now we're going to move on to motion to accept the resolution on Dr. Kukunis. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Matt. All in favor? Motion passes. Okay. We have no comments on the agenda, Lisa? Not seeing any superintendent's report? The audience agenda? Oh, superintendent's report. Thank you, Mrs. Downs. So good evening, everyone. Uh, congratulations again to our retire retirees and our newly tenured individuals. I'm certainly proud uh, to work alongside of all of you. And the month of June brought some normalcy, a return to normal normalcy for our students and staff. So we're very happy um, about that. So kudos first to our Blue Masks on their performance of High School Musical. Um, I did get to uh, watch it, it was live streamed. They did a phenomenal job. The kudos also, uh, in addition to all of the actors and actresses, Madison Stromsky did the, the video editing and it was very professionally done. The, the show was done throughout the high school. It was, it was terrific and hopefully you had an opportunity to see it. I'm proud of all of our students. Uh, we were also able to get back to normal with some awards and scholarships for our high school students in person and our juniors celebrated their senior, senior prom the end of May, and um, our seniors will be celebrating their senior prom next week. Musical performances have uh, been posted to our website, and while this is a very unusual year, our uh, concerts have looked very unusual. So kudos to all of our music teachers and fine arts director Jason Rotkamp for thinking out of the box and coming up with a way to celebrate our students' performances um, which everyone can now click on the website, the district website, and find it on the main page, and you'll see individual student performances, NISMA solos, as well as ensemble performances. Our high school students were also able to perform outside. Um, again, something that we've always thought about, having performance, musical performances outside, but because of the pandemic, we, we made it a reality. So hopefully some of these uh, great ideas will become traditions moving forward. Uh, kudos to our students and all of our art teachers. Again, Art in Action is historically was a huge event on a Friday evening here at the high school where artwork from all of our students K-12 were, were 
uh, brought together and on display, and everyone from the community came in and, and milled around and, and enjoyed the artwork. So we couldn't do that this year. So our art teachers, again, under the direction of Jason Rotkamp, came up with a, a different way of presenting the information. So the Art in Action link is on our district website. Please enjoy. Congratulations to our spring athletes. It was a long year. We, we didn't get to see all the athletic performances that we would have uh, hoped to see in a regular year, but we're very happy that we were able to have a spring season. So as we move forward to the next school year, we look forward to uh, fall, winter, and spring sports. So congratulations to our spring athletes. Today we started our moving up ceremonies in the elementary schools. And again, these look a little different than what they've looked like in the past. We have many, many uh, moving up ceremonies in order to uh, comply with social distancing requirements, but um, they will all celebrate the students' accomplishments. And high school graduation is scheduled right now for two ceremonies, Friday, June 25th at 5.30 p.m. and Saturday, June 26th at 10 a.m. As you may have heard, today the governor uh, lifted many restrictions on businesses and social gatherings, but unfortunately did not lift restrictions on schools. We are uh, hopeful that changes will be made which will allow us to still have one graduation ceremony for our high school students on Friday, June 25th. So stay tuned. We are monitoring the situation. We want nothing more than to bring our seniors together as one class as they deserve to celebrate all of their accomplishments over their educational career in Riverhead. And I'd like to welcome the arrival of our new superintendent, Dr. Tornatori, on July 1st. I wish him well, and I look forward to working with him. As I've mentioned previously, we're working on our spending plan for the federal funds, and I'd like to share some information regarding our plan for the American Recovery Plan funds. Oh, my clicker is not working. Can't advance the slide. Could you advance the slide for me, please? Thank you. So um, just a quick overview on the American Recovery Plan. It is fun funded by federal dollars. Under the American Recovery Plan alone, we're receiving about $12.7 million, which can be spent over three school years. We're looking to include activities and materials to support learning loss due to the pandemic, promote social emotional learning, meet needs, and enforce and promote health and safety across the district. Some of the requirements are to have summer enrichment, and each year the minimum is 291,000 per summer, as well as uh, promoting uh, after school activities. Again, a minimum of 291,000 per year. Um, we, I did put out a survey last week. It's still open. It's on the website, input from the community on ideas for spending uh, the money in a, a smart way to benefit our students. But this final plan must be posted on our website by July 1st, so that will get done. Um, we're working on the plan. We're gathering information, looking at the survey, and we'll, we're very excited about offering our students um, as much support as possible. So in the summer of uh, 2021, we're looking at a credit recovery program at the high school, which will be done remotely for students who uh, need to do some extra work to gain course credit from this past school year. Uh, we're looking to provide academic support to some of our middle school students in the building in the month of July. We contracted with SCOPE to provide enrichment for our students in K through six, this is for free. So um, that information is posted on the website and the building principals have the information as well. There are quite a few uh, options for students in the areas of music lessons, art, drama, STEAM, science, coding, reading, um, and sports and fitness throughout the month of July. And we also have a partnership with Stony Brook University. We started that partnership last year on a robotics opportunity called Snappy XO. So we are uh, looking for students to participate in that program this summer as well. 
looking at after school programs for the 21-22 school year. We're looking at a credit recovery program at the high school, continuing that, as well as creating an alternative high school for students who need a non-traditional way of attending school and learning. Uh, we're also looking to provide additional academic support at the middle school, support and enrichment opportunities for all students K-6, and tutoring for any K-12 students in need. So these are things that are allowed to be funded through uh, the federal funds. And then during the school year, we're looking to use the federal funding to provide social emotional supports for students, purchase additional technology as well as insurance for devices, hire additional teachers to provide small group support across the district, purchase materials to promote and foster literacy, uh, provide professional development for teachers and programs that we should decide to um, implement, and purchase additional PPE supplies as needed. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out to me by phone or by email. Um, and please, if you haven't already done so, take a look at the survey on the website. Does the board have any questions? Virginia? Um, the additional teachers, that's just uh, across the elementary? No, that was K-12. Okay, oh, K-12. So we're going to see more teachers up at the high school? Uh, we're looking at ways that we can provide additional support, um, remedial support, like an academic intervention services type support. Okay, all right. Because um, you know, I had the concern with the uh, class sizes at, for English. They were large pre-COVID, like there was average on 33. So um, that's something that I, I know that I, I would love to see is that we had smaller uh, classroom size, sizes, especially for the English classes. We'll look into that, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, Ms. Toner. I'm gonna move on to consent agenda. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Thank you, Brian. Any cares and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. There's no old business. We're moving on to new business. Approvable, approval of capital bus purchase. Um, the district hereby authorizes the purchase of the following Bluebird Bird bus. Bluebird, where'd I get blue? Manufactured vehicles during 2021, 2022. Can I have a motion? motion? Thank you, Matt. Could I have a second? Thank you, Brian. Any cares, concerns, questions? Not seeing any, all in favor? Motion passes. We're moving along to the approval of funding reserves. Can we have a motion? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Thank you, Brian. Any cares, concerns, questions? Can I, um, Sam, where are we at with the repair reserve? What is the fund balance currently? You. I don't have the answer to the fund balance currently. I know that you can fund, uh, you could fund an additional $4 million into it before its entire use is exhausted. It was approved by the voters for not more than seven and a half million. I can report back to the board with the exact amount of money that's in it right now. Okay, uh, great, thank you. This week. Any other questions? Not seeing any, could I have a motion? Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Oh, we got to that already. Could we have a vote? All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of internal audit reports. Board hereby accepts the 2019-2020 internal audit reports and the 2020-2021 internal audit reports. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Sue. Could I have a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? 
motion passes. A approval of intermunicipal agreements. 17 intermunicipal inter agreements for student transportation and other services. Can I have a motion? Thank you. Thank you, Therese. Could I have a second? Thank you, Matt. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any? All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of annual employment contracts for 2021-2022. I need a, do I do a motion first? Okay. I'd like to pull out A, B, C, and D separate from E through S. Can I have a motion to do that? Madam President, may I ask if we go adjourn into executive session? Thank you, Therese. I have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Sue. Okay, so first, first we're going to vote on A through D. All in favor? Oh, wait, I think he wanted to go into executive session. We want to go into executive session. You want to go to executive session? Yes. Yes, that's what he just said. If one person asks, we all have to go? One board member can make a motion. If it has a second and a majority, um, then we, you would be adjourning to executive session. Well, there was a second. I'll second it. I second. She seconded. Sue seconded. So then I took a vote. Mr. Mr. Doar, you need to specify the, the, the reason for um, going into executive session. I believe if you're going to pull some contracts out of the motion, we need to discuss that. So a motion to go into executive session to discuss the employment history of particular personnel? Sure, yes. Okay. We, need a second. we need a second. We need a second. Sue's the second. And now you need a vote on the motion. All in favor? Okay. Okay. We're going to take a little bit of a break. We're going into executive session. Downs, do we have a? Did we have no votes on that, or was it unanimous? Okay, just clarifying. Thank you. Motion to come out of executive session. Motion. Thank you, Matt. Second. Second. Thank you, Chris. All in favor? Motion passes. Okay. So. Approval of annual employment contracts. I'm pulling, I want to pull out A, B, C, and D as group one, and E through S as group two. Can I have a motion? I'm making the motion. And Therese is second. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Yes, I have a comment. Go ahead. You okay? Okay. Mrs. Downs, just to be clear, was this a motion to approve A through D or was this a motion to pull this them out? This is a motion A through D. Okay. And so this is your motion to approve A through D right now? Right. We okay. could do a second. We have to do a second motion on the second part? You have to pull them out pulling first. You, well, I'm that, pulling it. I'm pulling it out. That's, that's what I'm trying to clarify. Right. Was this the motion? Are you making a, a motion to pull? You don't need a motion to pull them out. You can pull them out. You don't need a motion to pull them out. Okay. So you've pulled them out. What you need now is a motion to approve A through D. Right. Okay. So I, don't so know I need a making, motion yeah. to approve A through D. All in favor? Motion. Oh, I need a mate, Matt. A second. Second. Chris, all in favor? Thank you. All no. 
motion passes. Now, go ahead. I just want to point out that I am voting no for this because we were in a contingency budget last year and I do not want to approve the increase from this past school year. Okay, so now I need a motion for E through S. Motion. Thank you, Chris. Second? With Brian, and then Brian, thank you. Any questions, cares, or concerns? All in favor? Motion passes. Motion passes. Approval of memorandums and agreement for teaching assistance. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Virginia. Can I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval on purchase under contingent budget of window air conditioners. Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Brian. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval to rescind award to an electrician service. Um, can I have a motion? motion? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Matt. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of assignment of agreement to a company that changed their name from Diamond and Blue Mechanical Corporation to Blue Diamond Air Systems Incorporation, Inc. Motion? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Second? Thank, Thank you. you, Virginia. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Award of new contracts and electrician services, New York trench list is number one. A Chromebook and iPad repair, Cell Mechanic Inc. Westbury and Micro Relay for Massachusetts. Number two, number three, remanufactured toner cartridges. Number four, interpreting translation and sign language services. Uh, substitute skilled nursing services, and always compassionate home care, Melville, New York, and Christian Nursing Registry in Smithtown. Can I have a motion? motion? Thank you, Matt. Can I have a second? I'll second. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of contract. This is a multi-year service agreement with Eastern Suffolk BOCES for bond services. Motion. Motion. Thank you, Brian. Second. Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Thank you. And motion passes. Letter L. Approval of renewal of contracts. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Second? Second. Thank you, Virginia. Any questions, cares, and concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of revised APPR plan, the annual professional performance review plan for teachers and principals. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Thank you, Brian. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Thank you. Motion passes. Approval of EBLAR. 
Can I have a motion? Motion. Thank you, Chris. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Sue. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any, all in favor? Motion passes. Approval of attendance to conferences for Dr. Tornatori, Virginia Healy, Colin Palmer, to the NISPR 2021 Summer Law Conference. And for number two is for myself, Lori Downs, NISPA 2021 Live Virtual Summer Law Conference. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Matt. Could I have a second? Thank you, Therese. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any, all in favor? Motion passes. Approval of the P, approval of the 2021 2022 salary schedule for non contracted employees. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Virginia. Can I have a second? Thank second. you, Therese. Any questions, cares, or concerns? Not seeing any. All in favor? Motion passes. Driver education program for the 2021-2022 school year. Can I have a motion? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Thank you, Matt. Any questions, cares, or concerns? I just have a quick comment. I would like to see this in the future, try to be put in as a regular class during the school day instead of a pull out um, after school. Um, if we can find a way to say period six, the students who want to drive driver's ed goes to driver's ed, put it in the regular school day. So I'm aging myself, but that's what I had, and there was really something to be said for having driver's ed during, I mean, I, I just the instruction and the consistency, um, so I, I would be in Thank favor you. of that. Anyone else? Great idea. <laughs> yeah, it is. All in favor? Motion passes. Approval, approval of settlement agreement. This is a settlement and release with a family known to the Board of Education. Can I have a motion, please? Thank you, Therese. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Virginia. Any questions, cares, or concerns? All in favor? Motion passes. Approval of donations. We got $2,100 from a donor known to the board to be used by the cafeteria program for 12th, 8th, sixth and fourth grade students with outstanding cafeteria debt. Number one, number two, we have several benches from, ask, can you say that? I don't, can't pronounce the name. Axel. Axel. As part of his Eagle Scout, this is cool, project and authorizes the benches to be placed at Riley Avenue Elementary School in accordance with the donor's wishes. Also, the Number three is the Billy Note Memorial Fund Foundation Committee in the amount of $1,000 to be used for the Tech Sergeant Deshaun J. Briggs Memorial Scholarship at the Riverhead High School. Thank you, everybody. These are all such wonderful donations. Can I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Chris. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Virginia. No, Any questions, sure. cares, or concerns? No, but thank you very much for the donations. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All in favor? Motion passes. Opportunity for board members. We got committee. Any committee report? No. no. Yeah, I have a, I have a committee report. Um, Thank you. The audit committee, um, made up of Sue Kakunis, Matt Wallace, myself, met on May 26 with several auditors. Jill Sanders, the external auditor with Colin Nadanowski, reviewed the plan for the annual external audit. Ms. Sanders noted that as an external auditor, she reports directly to the Board of Education and is willing to meet with the audit committee outside the presence of district administration on an as-needed basis. Ms. Sanders noted that the audit process applies materially to the exam transactions and applies skepticism in the examination of transactions. She also gave a review of the internal control testing procedures. 
Ms. Sanders thanked District Treasurer Nancy Rayner for committing, for committing to have the books and records available for the audit the week of July 26, which is earlier than normal. The committee then met with Ken Zabrowski, the internal auditor with Questar 3 BOCES. Mr. Zabrowski reviewed the internal audits for the 2020-2021 school year. The first audit concerned the district's payroll function. He selected a tested scope of 45 employees from across the district, including 10 teachers, 10 transportation staff, five food service staff, five operations and maintenance staff, five non-aligned personnel, five administrators, and five teacher assistants. Mr. Zembrowski noted that the claims auditor reviewed the payroll functions, which is an excellent control step the district put in place to ensure accuracy. The committee discussed moving to electronic time cards as a means to help control accuracy. The committee agreed that Mr. Schneider should investigate this option, price out the cost, and report back to the committee in the next school year. The second internal audit was a review of our Medicaid reimbursement function, whereby the district can seek reimbursement from Medicaid for the delivery of certain services to certain students. The program is laden with very strict operational procedures. The district uses a contractor for process these claims. Mr. Zembrowski noted that he had previously conducted an audit in this area of district operations in 2014-2015. Mr. Zembrowski also noted that contemporaneously to this current audit, the district underwent an audit by PCG Consulting, a contractor hired by New York State to review the Medicaid reimbursement operations of various school districts. The PCG audit noted no issues or negative operations in their testing. Mr. Zabrowski praised the work of Ready Consulting, the district's contractor hired to process the claims. Dr. Kunkunis noted that the district had made many improvements in the Medicaid reimbursement function since the last audit. Mr. Zambrowski noted that the PPS has made many improvements in its record keeping procedures. The audit committee asked Mr. Zambrowski to finalize the reports. The meeting was the last one for Dr. Kakunas, who has served on the committee for nine years. Thank you. Any other committee minutes? Board comments? I have some comments. Go ahead. I have a whole bunch of acknowledgments uh, since this is the last meeting of the year. Um, first, I'd like to thank um, Elena Philcox for all the work that she did on the senior spotlight slides. Um, they looked great, and thank you for the hard work she put into that. Um, and this is what I would like um, currently and in the future. I'd like to acknowledge at graduation this year our top vocational student with the highest GPA. Um, not every student goes to college, but um, our vocational students um, do great work and are prepared to go right into the workforce. And I think our top students should be acknowledged the same as our valedictorian and our salutatorian. Um, also along these lines, um, probably not this year, but I'd like to acknowledge the top male and female scholar athlete um, I know other districts acknowledge their top scholar athlete. Um, it's one thing to be great academically, but to also be great academically and um, participate in two, three sports. It also shows an additional um, dedication. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge all our athletes who had a year like no other. Our fall and winter sports were canceled due to a contingency budget, and our spring athletes were able to play, but faced many challenges such as weekly COVID tests. Whether you're able to play or not, I want to thank you all for your dedication and hard work. Unfortunately, we're not able to have a formal sports award ceremony, but I am sure your coaches made sure you were pre presented with all your awards. Again, I just want to thank you all for the hard work that you've put in through the years. Um, that's it. Else? Um, I'd like to doc, uh, thank Dr. Kukunis for her years of service on the board. Thank you. And then also thank uh, Ms. Toner for stepping up for interim superintendent for the past year. Thank you.
Go ahead, Virginia. Um, I also want to echo Matt and um, thank Dr. Kokonis for uh, the years that she's been a Board of Ed trustee and um, her dedicated service to the district and as well um, to thank um, uh, Mrs. Ms. Tona for, uh, like I said, stepping up uh, as interim superintendent. Uh, and and uh, I also just want to um, just acknowledge, I, I think this has just been a difficult year um, so we have so many heroes uh, in our district from you know, our teachers, our staff, all the parents, um, and especially our students. Um, so you know, with that, I, I, I'm looking forward to that we have brighter days ahead, but it has taken a toll and we have to acknowledge that. Um, I think in the end, always asking, you know, how are the children doing, as Dr. Reller used to always ask and so I hope we go into um, when we plan for next year you know um, always having that in the forefront thinking about you know the children and and that and that classroom setting for for next year thank you anyone else yes That's um, I just like to say it was an honor serving as your board trustee for over the past nine years and um, I've been thinking about all the changes, you know, good changes that have been made um, through our discussions over the nine years and our accomplishments and how the district has changed in a very positive manner. So I'm very grateful for that. And I wanna thank our, the cabinet members for, you know, getting us through this year of uncharted waters. There was no manual for, written manual. We were kind of writing it as we went along and you know the hours of the meetings you know trying to decide what's right all the changes in policy and laws i just want to thank everyone i know we're all tired <laughs> um and you know I, I just wish everybody a great healthy and safe summer um and to all our blue waves if you take the blue wave and become a Suffolk shark, look me up. I will be there for you. Thank you, Sue, and thank you for your service and time to the community. Thank you, Ms. Tona, for giving up your time and doing all that you did this year. And the parents, I wanna thank all the parents, all the PTOs, the teachers, the custodians, everybody. This was a year that's going in history. Um, thank you, everybody. Therese? You're good. RCFA? Uh, good evening. Uh, we would like to congratulate our retirees, our new appointees, and our newly tenured teachers. Um, the RCFA would also like to thank Sue Kukunis for her selfless service to the students of Riverhead. We cannot thank you enough for your time and efforts on behalf of the children of Riverhead. The association would like to extend its sincere, sincere gratitude to the Director of Security, Mr. Terry Culhane. The association's leadership had worked closely with Mr. Culhane throughout the year as we navigated all things COVID. Mr. Culhane went so far as to distribute his personal number, making himself available to our membership around the clock, taking their calls all hours of the day and even on weekends. And the best part about him giving his personal number to our members was that my phone rang a lot less. Lastly, we would like to thank Christine Tona. Our team spent a lot of time together this year trying to figure out how to educate children during this global pandemic on a contingency budget. You always put the children of Riverhead first, and we really look forward to continue to working with you moving forward. This year is drawing to its inevitable conclusion, and after this year, a conclusion is certainly welcome. Although some of the obstacles created by COVID were unique to Riverhead, there were a number of circumstances that made this year especially difficult for our school. As we turn the corner on the pandemic, a, a little time away is certainly welcomed. This year was amongst the most challenging we have faced. The effects of the pandemic on education and learning will continue to have an impact on our students for years to come. So our work is just beginning. Yet rising from the ashes of a failed budget, the recent increase in foundation aid, as well as federal dollars received by our district, 
provides Riverhead with a unique, unique opportunity, a fresh start, so to speak. The discontinuity of instruction undoubtedly has resulted in learning gaps as well as creating social and emotional difficulties. I'm supremely confident in Riverhead's teachers, nurses, guidance counselors, psychologists, social workers, speech pathologists, and librarians' abilities to address the needs of students in our care. We know that instruction and instructional support are a priority, and we are certainly taking a step in the right direction with the newly created interventionalist position. But this new position is only one facet of ensuring students with learning needs are appropriately addressed. We have seven different school buildings, each, with, each unique in their own right. But the association firmly believes when we have cohesive student-centered programs, which are universally implemented and embraced across all buildings, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. With a district our size containing a population with a, a diverse set of student needs, there is an expectation of program drift occurring over time in buildings when everyday variables are accounted for. When a significant educational disruption brought on by a global pandemic is added to the calculus, program shifts will undoubtedly accelerate. The association is asking the district to evaluate the IST process across the district, assess the process for deviations, and realign the process for consistency across all buildings if there are discernible differences noted. As we begin, as we begin to get back to some level of normalcy, the association feels strongly that this singular initiative which uses a collective team approach to identify student needs and design interventions to maximize student growth has the potential to have the greatest benefit for our students here at Riverhead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Opportunity for the public. Yeah, go ahead. There is a question from um, Brian Mills from Wading River. Yes, that's me right here. It's the same. Uh, I'm sorry? That this is your letter that she's reading? Oh, uh, oh are you going to read the letter? I was going to. Oh, that'd be great. Thank to. you. No, please. I, <laughs> okay. Please, by all means. He would like to know what the procedure, um, what procedure is necessary to ensure that a two bus situation to Our Lady of the Hamptons is maintained for the fall. Okay, could you? Can you state your name and, and township? Yes, it's uh, Brian Mills Township is uh, uh, Wading River, actually. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually, um, about, I guess about a week ago or a week and a half ago, um, I had reached out to, I guess her name is Miss uh, Fjurcht, is that how you say it? Fjurcht, over at the Transportation Department, um, and Ms. Moore. Uh, just as a, just expressing a concern regarding the busing situation to Our Lady of the Hamptons come the fall. Uh, this was our first year uh, using the uh, bu the busing service for private school, and um, the pickup time for us out of Pulaski Street was uh, 7:34 a.m. and from what I understand, traditionally, there's uh, two buses that go from Riverhead to Our Lady of the Hamptons. There's one from Pulaski Street, um, and then there's another one that picks up a couple of students, I guess, who are a little bit closer, and then just goes down to Southampton. Uh, so this year, there was a uh, two-bus situation uh, as a result of the pandemic and the social distancing. Um, which actually, as parents, we thought was great because the 734 uh, pickup uh, was, 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 was very convenient. We're hearing that it's possible that the, the transportation department wants to go back to a one bus situation, which is perfectly fine um, with most of the parents. However, the caveat is that it, there would be a 6.50 a.m. departure, which means that for those of us who have kindergartners, first and second graders, we have to leave our house at about 6.20, which is extremely early for kids in that age bracket. Um, and then the, the, the uh, drop off is at four o'clock in the afternoon. So it's a very, very long day for those kids. So we're appealing to you, the board, um, as representatives for those of us in the community to uh, really try to examine this and see if there is a possible way to maintain this two busing situation so that these kids are not put in such a very uh, strenuous situation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. 
Mr. Schneider? Mr. Mills, thank you very much for your, your comment and your email. I appreciate you working with the Transportation Department. We obviously want to provide the best service we can for all students, whether they go to the public schools or the parochial of schools. Uh, we certainly haven't made any decisions about what we're doing next year in terms of, of busing to any, any school. We need to see what the enrollment is, where the mm -hmm. students live. I know that Ms. Tona had received a suggestion today from one community member who I think is in a similar situation to you, that we establish a, a second central pickup point as a way of cutting down on the route. That'd be great. I, I think that there's certainly some merits to that idea. We would have to get all the parents to agree to it, though, because there are some folks on that bus who are entitled to a house stop. So, you know, we need to look and see what kids are riding, what kind of route it would look like. I, I think there's a number of moving parts. We also need to make sure that we have two buses available after we meet all the needs for the, the students here. Uh, so certainly we, we'll be happy to work with you over the, the coming weeks and months. Yeah. To try to make it the best ride possible for your students, for your, your children, and for all students who are on that bus. Uh, you know, we haven't made any decisions yet about what we're doing, though. And, and I would imagine you haven't. So that's, but that's why we wanted to bring it up this far in advance. So at least you guys are aware that it's out there and uh, it's uh, being discussed. And uh, I do appreciate you taking the time. I do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Good evening, Mary Mackey. Uh, for the last time, president of the Riverhead High School PTSO. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's really hard to sum up 12 years being in the PTSO from Riley Avenue to the high school in three minutes, but I'll try my best. Um, I don't have anything written. I just wanted to say how rewarding it was. I appreciate all the support and the shout outs uh, two weeks ago at the last Board of Ed meeting. I wish I was here. Um, so I appreciate all the support. The administration, the Board of Ed gives the PTSOs. I enjoyed the um, the presentations from all the buildings and the shout outs to the PTSOs, especially this year because we filled a lot of the gaps being in a contingency budget. We kind of kept the events going for the students, which is our main uh, focus is the students. So um, it, it hasn't always been easy. And as you all know, as volunteers, it's not easy sometimes, but to focus on the students and the, the memories that I'll take with me are making sure a student gets a book at a Scholastic Book Fair or a, a present for their mom who they couldn't um, at any of the uh, holiday shopping, uh, the dances, the, um, you know, uh, too much to mention um, throughout all the years. And uh, that's what I'll take with me. And I want to thank my two sons. I have twin uh, seniors, uh, Ryan and Sean. And it's uh, not always easy being the children of a PTSO president or um, so I want to thank them for everything they, they, they've done and put up with. They see the behind the scenes sometimes and it's not always easy on them. So I appreciate them uh, supporting me and this is why I do it, is for the students. Um, they have set up early and stayed late and uh, set up dances and carried things for me. And um, so I appreciate them and that's why I did it, is for all students um, and my boys to have the best experience here in Riverhead that they could possibly have. And to see smiles on little children's faces when you're able to, you're in a position and you're able to give them something that they wouldn't necessarily have. Um, that's what I'm gonna take with me. Um, the senior picnic was a success. We have a couple of glitches in the beginning with entry, but we figured that out. All students on the premises that wanted to get in got in. All students that wanted to eat, to eat ate. Um, and we worked that out. And from then on, it was flawless. The, the students had fun. Uh, everything worked out. Beautiful, sunny day. We have the senior parade on Friday. And then, of course, prom and graduation. So um, I just wanted to thank you all. Thank you for what you do uh, for the students. And again, I'm taking with me a lot of good memories over the years. And thank you to all the administration. Um, our senior banner arrives tomorrow. I can't wait for the students to see it. And um, I just want to thank you all. And uh, it's been a wonderful 12 years. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you, Mrs. Mackey, for your partnership, your kindness, your generosity over the years. It's greatly appreciated. 
Anybody else from the public have anything else to say? Hello, um, my name is Kathleen McCora. I am from Aquavog. Uh, two separate questions that I have is, I know that somewhere in the uh, discussions of our new budget, there was some thought given to a ninth period next year. And I'm trying to find out if that's still something that's being discussed, if it would begin in September or if it would begin the following year. Um, my second question, I'm sure you all read my emails over the weekend about the state of our current Latin program. I know that there has been a lot of discussion and I appreciate it, Ms. Toner, and with Ms. Stevenson and Mr. O'Hara. Um, for those of you that didn't get a chance to speak to anybody, to my knowledge, we have two students, two, that are actually done with Latin, that were able to complete the online program. Um, that's sad. That's, you know, you're talking about, I don't know how many kids right now that are in danger of failing their class. I do not know if the Board of Ed contracted with Sterling Academy for one year or two years. If they contracted with them for one year, I would give some serious thought to not hiring them again to finish out our current ninth graders. Um, because that program, if you haven't seen it working, is incredibly difficult to work with. Students get blocked. They have to email a teacher for access to the program. It takes days to get a response. My son was blocked from the program for five days this week, so he couldn't do any work. While he sat in the library in his Latin class, he couldn't do any work. And the teacher never got back to him. Her office hours are at 8.30 at night. She's in Virginia, we've never seen her, we've never spoken to her. Um, and it is definitely not a program that is going to offer any benefit to any of the students. So I'm assuming that we're going to offer them Latin next year so that our current ninth graders can finish. But I would give some serious thought to a different program. And I would give some serious thought to reaching out to one of our recently retired Latin teachers and letting them teach it virtually two days a week while the kids do independent study two days a week. It would be a more cohesive program. It would be a more consistent program. And it would be something that the, you know, the kids are used to the teacher. They'd be much more comfortable reaching out for help. So again, in the ninth period, I think is a great idea. And I'm just wondering if that's still something we're kicking around. Ms. Toner. Thank you. Um, this is McCora. The uh, ninth, ninth period day was something that was discussed, but not for next year. It takes quite a bit of time to put something like that into motion. So we are going to continue to explore that with a, a hope that we can get that um, going for the 22-23 school year. With regards to the Latin program, you and I had spoken. I, I'm not sure if the letter went out today or it's going out tomorrow or later this week, but um, all of the students who did not complete the program at this point, will be afforded additional time uh, through August 31st, if necessary, to complete the program. We're looking to provide additional support over the summer, as we did during the school year, and still uh, through Sterling Academy. Um, as the parents know, uh, last September, August, September, when uh, we were faced with a situation when we did not have a certified Latin teacher to continue the program, we explored all options. We were in contact with the New York State Education Department, and Sterling Academy was the only uh, way that we were able to continue students who wanted to get the credit in Latin. Um, we will certainly continue to explore other options. If there are retired Latin teachers that are interested, um, we could certainly reach out to them and see uh, where we are with that process, but I do not believe that they were available uh, last year when, um, when this occurred. So um, we, we certainly want to be able to provide the students with all of the supports needed. I, I do understand about the program with getting locked out after failing a test three times or, or jumping around the, the program. Um, it's my understanding the teacher who's assigned to the Riverhead students, she does work Monday through Friday if a, and it takes about 24 hours, 24, um, a business day in order to get unlocked. So if a student gets locked out on a Friday, it's certainly possible that the student won't get unlocked until a Tuesday morning. So you know, if, if we're counting weekend days, 
unfortunately, the, the woman does not work seven days a week. So um, we certainly want to be able to afford the current Latin students the ability to complete the program and be in line for an advanced regents diploma. So thank you for your input and uh, we'll continue to look at options if they're available to us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tona. Anyone else? Hi, how are you? Sorry to readdress the uh, OLH bus. I know there's much larger problems you have you to have deal with. Do you have your name in Township, please? Oh, sorry. My name is Robin, Waiting River Township as well. Thank you. Um, just a quick, uh, quick thing to keep in mind. My daughter's been going there since uh, uh, fourth grade. She'll be in seventh next year. And we did appreciate the two bus situation this year, just for another aspect, just to keep in mind. The past previous years, they were late almost every day to school, at least by five to six to eight minutes. I have that Life 360 where I can see her time arrival. And this year has been much better with the late um, bus due to the two bus situation and not having to extend the uh, Flanders pickup due to the traffic, even when it comes to the Hamptons traffic as the year goes on and everybody starts doing their houses and homes out there um, with the trade parade they call. So it would just be just something just to keep in mind in addition to when they come home and we have the four o'clock pickup for next year. If it does have the two bus situation, we are about a half hour. So we're starting homework around 445 at night, five o'clock and going until about eight. So it's just, just something to keep in mind. That was it. Sorry to bring it up again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, good evening. My name is Peter Ryan. I have a son. We live in the district. He also goes to OLH, which uh, Could you beyond give your the name bus, in township, please. Uh, Riverhead Township. Okay. So anyway, um, besides the bus, that 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 situation has created an additional challenge for us. Uh, my son needed a continues to need really remedial uh, remedial speech therapy, and. We were told, we, we first met with this school because, you know, it made sense. This is where we're paying our taxes. And they told us we had to go to Southampton. So with, with getting shuffled around for several months, it ends up we got kicked, uh, you know, got kicked to the curb from Southampton District. So I'm just curious if you could enlighten me as to who ultimately would be able to assist us in such a situation. Mr. Schneider. Ms. Tona. Hi, um, after the meeting, if you could give me your name and phone number and I'll have someone from our pu pupil personnel department give you a call tomorrow because I'm not familiar with your case. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, this wraps it up. Last meeting of the year. Can I have a motion, please? Thank you, Sue. Can I have a second? Thank you, Chris. Any questions, cares, concerns? All in favor? You too. Motion passes. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Enjoy your summer. <laughs>